Theater Company in conjunction with the Missouri History Museum has pro is producing the play Afflicted, a tale about the girls of Salem. And joining us is Julia Flood, the artistic director of Metro Theater Company. Welcome, Julia. Thank you. So you're in the middle of producing, just starting production of yes, Afflicted. Yes, we're just to, we're finishing up casting and the design, and we're doing all of the research background on the play and getting all of our um, educational materials together to do a uh, mini website for educators and anyone else who's just fascinated by the story yeah. of these Metro girls. Theater, you, you have a long tradition of working with schools and having plays that have an educational basis. Yes. Um, this play is based on what really happened with the girls in Salem and the witch trials in 1691 and 92. And, uh, but it, it's a new spin on it. It's a brand new script. Mm -hmm. um, that is written by Laurie Brooks, who is a very well-known uh, writer of plays for young audiences and also some novels for young audiences. It was commissioned by the Coterie Theater in mm -hmm. Kansas City, which is, the Coterie is kind of our sister city across the state. Right. Uh, they premiered it in January, and we're going to be doing the second production so, of so, it. So two productions, the only two so far, both in the state of Missouri. Exactly, so That's yeah. very exciting for us. Yes. Um, it's a really interesting, Lori is brilliant at writing plays that explore the way young people, especially young people who are in their early teens um, and, and moving through their teens, how they think, how they, uh, she, she works a lot with young people and mm -hmm. so her take on what's going on inside of a young person's mind is very interesting and she's really savvy with that. And in this play, I think she really um, pretty much nails it. It's really ex an exciting so play. So from an audience perspective, yeah. what's going to be kind of the new take? What, what can we expect? Because a lot of people have studied and these kids in the audience will have studied the yeah. Salem Witch Trials, but is there a new spin then that we're going to learn something different? Yeah, I think what Lori... Um, Lori has created uh, an origin story. So for a, for a lot of us, I think one of our first exposures to the uh, Salem Witch Trials might have been through The Crucible by, by Arthur Miller. And that play, as you probably know, is, uh, was his response to the McCarthy Trials in the 50s and the, the whole... Um, so it was historically based about something that was going on then. Mm -hmm. This play ends where the crucible begins. So this is about what happened with these girls living in this really repressive puritanical society uh, where they had no hope for the future, no outlet for their creativity. Uh, there was nothing a girl could do if she didn't get married or w she was a servant. There was no hope for her. Mm -hmm. So where they found their outlet was through their relationship with each other and they would meet secretly in the woods and then the stories and secrets and gossip spun out of control and ended up with these trials where they accused over a hundred of their neighbors of witchcraft and 20 people died and two dogs mm -hmm. were hanged for witchcraft. <laughs> and, they, and they really started with these girls yeah. meeting in the woods. That's historically accurate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and the girls, there's there are hundreds, as many theories about what made them do this as there, you know, as there are. Um, so can you talk about some of those theories right oh, now sure. without spoiling the, the Yeah, the well, play? some of them are not really in the play, but mm -hmm. the, some of the theories, there's a theory that, um, that there was a, a, a fungus growing on the rye, which uh, called ergot, which caused ergotism, mm -hmm. which um, if you eat it, supposedly produces LSD-like symptoms, mm -hmm. and that perhaps the girls ate bread that had this and then so they started hallucinating and having um, seizures and uh, there were a lot of physical symptoms mm -hmm. of the girls um, uh, and but even something like that even if they did have that experience what makes them take that extra step to accuse other people right. and I think Lori uh, she really digs underneath and figures out ways that that this might have been triggered. Um, and all in a way that's approachable for <clears throat> young people. 
exactly the show. Yeah, in fact, this the five of the six characters, all the characters are women, and five of the six are teenage characters. So mm-hmm. it's really coming from the point of view of those girls. And the six is Tichuba the slave who had had no outlet either. So right. um, and the the uh, the parallels. That's one of the things I find really interesting with her, with all of Laurie's plays, and particularly this one, are the parallels to now, mm-hmm. because we see um, there are a lot of situations where young people have, if they feel they have no hope, if they if the society has ignored them and they have nowhere to go with their creativity and their intelligence. Where does all that energy that right. that a teenager has? <laughs> where can that go? And these and these young teens have a lot to offer to our society. Exactly. So we're going to take a quick break right now, okay. um, but we're going to talk more about the Metro Theater Company's entire season. There's lots of things <laughs> exciting happening. So stay with us and uh, to STL to be live. Stay with us here, and we'll hear more about Afflicted and Metro Theater Company and their entire season after we take this break.